Hey, it's your Wisconsin Wine Guy. You know what? You can already see what wine this is. How interesting is that? But, you know, we'll still get to it in a minute. We still got to do the business, right? Got to do the business. So, Wisconsin Wine Guy, it's here for another wine review. And these wines are everyday wines you can find on the shelves of your local liquor store, grocery store, and some wine shops. I go through, select a few wines and take them home, give it a taste, give you my personal opinion, what I think about the wines, just to be utilized as a guide for you in determining, you know, should I buy this, should I not buy this? So many wines out there, you know, that you don't know what they taste like. So this hopefully helps you decide if you should make the investment and purchase that wine or not. But you know how I say, let your palate be the guide. So now, very, very simple system. You know, I don't, I cut through all the red tape, make it very simple for you. I do it quickly, thumbs up. I mean, I recommend this wine. Give it a try. You'll enjoy it. I enjoy it. You won't go wrong with it. All right? But again, that's my palate. But I want you to give it a try. Three quarters. You know what? If I'm at a party, the music's rocking, you know, everybody's having a good time, the food's on, on point, you know, and the wine is just like, wow. Okay, if I'm at a party and someone offered me this wine, I would drink this wine. I won't turn it down. That's three quarters, you know, but I do like all the extras, do. Halfway? Mmm, mmm, mmm. Wow, you know, something about that wine, something is missing in that wine. It just does not resonate with me. It's just not, it's not, not working. You know, thumbs down. Let's not even have a conversation about it, but I will tell you what it was I did not like about the wine. Maybe the wine is off. This particular finish or this particular bottle was off, and I may have to try it again later. Or maybe it's just, you know what, I've had this wine before, and I used to tell you if I had a wine before, and it still doesn't taste good. <laughs> All right, so there you go. There you have it. So you already see what wine this is today, you know, and we're drinking Yellowtail. Well, we have two Yellowtail wines. You know how I feel about it. I love having wines from the same winery or made by the same winemaker. It gives me an idea across the board how they're crafting a certain level of their wines, all right? So Yellowtail wines, we all know Yellowtail. Yellowtail took the world by storm many, many years ago, and there's still a lot of people, still a lot of Yellowtail haters out there, but you know what? I believe there are more Yellowtail lovers out there than there are Yellowtail haters, and it's wine. Okay, I don't stand on ceremony. I'm not snooty. You know, wine drinking is meant to be snooty. Wine drinking is meant to be enjoyed. Yes, our palates elevate or we gravitate to our certain wines, you know, but I don't follow the Joneses. I don't follow the crowd. I follow my palate and I advise you to do the same. And that's how I do these reviews. So Yellowtail, I have two wines here. I have sitting on the pedestal here because I had never reviewed this before. This is the Yellowtail Cabernet 2020 from Australia. All right. And then I'm also going to be doing the Yellowtail Pinot Grigio 2020. Now, I did the Yellowtail Pinot Grigio before. I can't remember what vintage it was, but I did it before, and I, but I did enjoy it. I thought it would be a good everyday drinking wine. But now we're going to have two of these together. And based on what I remember from the Yellowtail before, okay, uh, there's a little there's a little kiss of sweetness there. So I would not have this before the Cabernet. I would have the Cabernet first. This one those whole white before reds, you know. There are no rules in wine as far as I'm concerned, okay. They try to set some standards. But you know what? Sometimes you have to break those rules, break those standards, you know, and, 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 and go by your palate. You know, you'll be surprised if you stay if you step out of the line, what you'll discover. So that's what we're doing today. We're gonna do the Cabernet first, then the Pinot Grigio. The Pinot Grigio is gonna be served as a refresher from my palate. And I know there's a hint of sweetness there. I already know that, but not with this one, but I know from the other one. But we're gonna find out. So I'm gonna pour them both. Ooh, Haley's Corker always does a great job. That's Haley's Corker, Haley'sCorker.com. Always does a great job in keeping my wines fresh for me. You know, depending on the wine, I can sit on these wines for a week. If I open them one time, put a Hades cork on, I can sit on them for a week. Open it up, it's just like I just opened it fresh for the first time. So this had a traditional cork. You find, you know, for the most part, in some wine, lines of wines that some of the, the reds would have traditional cork and the whites would have a screw cap. But you know what? I don't stand on ceremony. I stand on drinking the wine and hopefully the wine is good. That's what matters to me. I don't care so much about the closure. 
unless the closure is already faulted. There you go. So now, Yellowtail, Cabernet, Yellowtail, Pinot Grigio. Take a look at that. Now, deep, dense. Now, we're talking about fruit coming out of Australia. You know, and when we talk about fruit from Australia, we're talking about sun, heat, the southern hemisphere, all types of sun. Right, 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 right. Unless there's a bad year. And that can't happen. But check out that color. Okay? That's deep. I mean, I'm looking inside the glass. That's deep. That's deep, that's depth, that's rich, that's color, all right? Alcohol, for both of the wines, we're coming in at, you know, I keep saying this all the time. One year, they're going to put the alcohol statement on the, in the same place in every bottle. So 13.5% on the Cabernet, and we're looking at 11.5% on the Pinot Grigio. All right, so we set the color of that. Here's the color of the Pinot Grigio. Again, yellow with uh, greenish hues to it. Get a little nose. Now, I couldn't find uh, wood on it, but there was uh, a short part, a short amount of time of wood, but I couldn't find how much, if any. I'm going to say they probably use staves or something. Not necessarily put this in the wood, but probably use, you know, oak staves in like a tea bag. Dump it in the in uh in this tank and just let the the some of the wood get uh, penetrated by the wine. But mm, blackberries, plum. There's a little sweet fruit there, blended with the vanilla. If there's any, but definitely has sweet fruit taste to it. Uh, smell to it. <laughs> Freak, sweet fruit smell to it on this one. All right. Now, to the Pinot Grigio. Apple, citrus. I'm going to stick with apple and citrus. Almost like a, oh, like a candied citrus here. Just for the nose, but really nice. I mean, it just it, it smells refreshing. Yeah, you know me, I like to taste for acidity. Wipe just fresh out of the refrigerator. So let's uh, taste the red first, because I know what's happening here from the past, and I don't want to ruin the Cabernet. Let's give the Cabernet a fair shot, right? Right. So again, mm, there's a lot of yellowtail haters out there, but it's all wine. For those who don't know, when I had my shop, yellowtail made a reserve yellowtail, which was phenomenal. I haven't seen that wine since, a reserve yellowtail. But if you can find it, give it a try. Here we go. Okay. There's almost like a as I said, uh, cooked fruit, sweet fruit taste, sweet fruit smell, tannins are there, but it's not that well blended. It's like, boom, fruit, if you already mind to get the fruit, then it goes away. Then it rolls into kind of the vanilla finish. Then you got the tannins. It's kind of like awkward, you know, for me on the taste on the Cabernet, and that's too bad, you know, because the 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 standard elements of it, you know, seems pretty good, but it seems out of out of play, out of out of order here on my palate. Now for the Pinot Grigio, the Ritz. Okay, clean, but let's do another rinse because that was pretty rich tasting, that Cabernet. Okay, now, as I said, it's a little sweetness. Let's confirm that. A little sweetness there, but, you know, sweetness, this is enough to make it right and fruity. It's like biting into an apple. Yep. Kind of done. <laughs> this is what I thought. So, the Pinot Grigio, just like biting into an apple, 
So honey crisp apple. Subtle lemon. But again, for me, overall just pleasant. Just this is easy, this is easy, nothing to think about. Pour me some Pinot Grigio. You know, at this price point, it's a very decent Pinot Grigio. You can find Pinot Grigios at a higher price point, say like $10, $12, that can be like this. You know, so it's not bad at all. Uh, so let's get to the grading. The Cabernet, I'm going to go halfway on that, you know. Um, it's awkward. It seems very awkward to me, and that's why I did that one first, because I wanted to know without any influence or anything else. It's very awkward to me. You know, let me taste it again. You know, I, I, I could change my mind. No, halfway. I'm not feeling the, the Cabernet. Uh, you can do better. For it's, at its price point, it is what it is. Uh, some off-dry drinkers may enjoy it, but you can do better, all right? It's almost like it was a science project put together, <laughs> but, yeah, it's, it's kind of awkward, kind of clunky to me. Pinot Grigio, for me, though, you know, I'm going to go three quarters on it. I would drink this. It's summertime. It's spring. It's summer. I would drink this. I wouldn't turn down the party. It's very pleasant. You know, uh, easy to drink. You know, nothing to think about. I'm not trying to solve the problems of the world with a Pinot Grigio. But I just want to, you know, enjoy a nice, crisp, refreshing white wine. You know, very good for its price point. I would enjoy this. So, here we go again. Cabernet. I'm going to go thumbs down. I went halfway. I'm going to go thumbs down on this one. That's, that's just not for me. All right? For me, thumbs down. You may, somebody may enjoy it, but for me, it's a, it's a thumbs down. You know, uh, that, that it's too awkward. Pinot Grigio, three quarters. All right, let's repeat that again. Cabernet, thumbs down for the Wisconsin wine guy. It's way too clunky, way too awkward for me. Uh, the Yellowtail, Pinot Grigio, three quarters. I'm digging it. So there you have it. I'm going to take my, my Cabernet glass. Slide to the side, and I'm going to keep enjoying my Pinot Grigio. So there you have it. It's your Wisconsin wine guy saying, as always, let your palate be the guy selecting your wine. I look forward to showing you something new next time. Ciao.